Welcome back, class. I'm Mr. Teacher with the SAT Math Video Guide. Last time, we left off at number three of section eight, and so let's move on. So, number four. In the xy coordinate plane, what is the area of the square with opposite vertices at negative two, negative two, and two, two? So, opposite vertices. Well, what you can do is draw a tiny little graph because the values aren't that big. So, this is the x-axis. This is the y-axis. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, the opposite vertices are at ordered pair negative 2 and negative 2. So, over here. And plus 2 and plus 2. So, that's over here. So, it says that it's a square so all the sides are going to be equal so let's count down from this point to, to the y value of this point so it's one zero one two so that's four spaces so the sides on this side's length is four likewise the side of this length is also going to be four with one two three four so we know that the sides are 4 and 4. Well, because it's a square, we could have told right from right here because the area of a square is just side squared. So it's asking for the area. So it's the area of a square equals to x squared, which is equal to 4 squared, which is equal to 16. That's choice C. So let's move on. Number five. It says the four children in the Spear family are Owen, Chad, Steph, and Daria. Chad is neither the youngest nor the oldest. Daria is one of the two older children. Steph is the youngest child. Owen is often taken care of by his older brother and sister. So who is the oldest child? Well, Let's create four placeholders of where the brothers and sisters are going to be. So, let's keep it like this. And from youngest to oldest. So, first we know that Chad is neither the youngest nor the oldest. So, Chad can be either here or he can also be here. Then Daria is one of the two older children. So Daria can be here or Daria can be with Chad over here. Steph is the youngest child. Well, if we know that Steph is the youngest child, Steph is going to be right here. And Owen is often taken care of by his older brother and sister. Well, if Steph is the youngest child, we can't say Owen is. So Owen has to come over here, who he's taken care of by his older brothers and sisters. So Owen is here. And since Chad is neither the youngest nor the oldest, so Chad goes over here and Daria goes over here. So Daria is the oldest. Who is the oldest child? It's B, Daria. So let's move, go to number six. Number six. And they've drawn a parallelogram here. Hopefully I could draw it well enough. Uh, goes like this. Goes like this. Close enough. And this is x degrees, this is y degrees, this is quadrilateral p, q, r, s. So, 
if Q, line QR is parallel to QPS in the figure above, what is the value of 2 times X plus Y? Well, okay, so QR is parallel to PS. So now what we need to visualize is that this is this isn't just a parallelogram, but what you can do is extend these lines like this. So extend. So what does this look like to you now? It it looks like x and y are same side interior angles. So what is the rule with same side interior angles when two parallel lines are cut by a transversal and form these types of angles? If they're same side interior, x plus y is going to be equal to 180. So we found that. This is equal to 180. But we're going to try and find this. So it's 2 times 180, which is 360. That is choice E. Let's go on to number 7. Okay, the average of three positive integers, x, y, and z, is 12. So, x plus y plus z divided by, there's three terms, 3 is equal to 12. When the greatest of these numbers is subtracted from the sum of the other two, the result is 4. So, one of these is subtracted from the other two, and the result is 4. For, but first we need to find what x plus y plus z equals to. So we multiply out the 3. x plus y plus z is equal to 36. So either one of these is subtracted from the other two, and this turns into 4. If x is less than y, which is less than z, okay, so z is the biggest one. So it's x, which is less than y, which is less than z. So z is the greatest. z is subtracted from x and y, so x plus y minus z will equal to, it said it'll equal to 4. So which of the following pairs of equations could correctly express the information above? Okay. So you can cross off right now b, you can cross off c, because they, you can cross off b, c, d, and b, c, and d, because they have the wrong values in the first place. b says x plus y minus z is equal to 8, so that's crossed off. Then c says x plus y plus z is equal to 24, but we found out that that equals to 36. And d says the same thing right here, x plus y minus z equals to 8, and this as well. So they're all crossed off. Choice E says that x plus y plus z equals to 36. That's correct. But then x times y minus z equals to 4. Well, no, because this is going to be wrong because z is just subtracted from the sum of the other two, it says in the problem. So this is also incorrect. Our only choice is A which is exactly what we wrote down over here. x plus y plus z equals to 36, and x plus y minus z equals to 4. So, now let's go to number 8. Number 8. Okay, if x and y are positive integers, and 3 t 3 to the power of 2x times 3 to the power of 2y equals to 81, then what is the value of x plus y? So whenever you see an exponential problem like this, first what you need to do, or try to do, is try and make them all the numbers of the same base. So what can we do with 81? We Can we change it to 3? Well, we could, and we could try it, and it's going to work. So, so 3 to the power of 3 is equal to 27. No, that's not it. 
so 3 to the power of 4 is going to be equal to, yes, 81. So we could change this equation to 3 to the power of 2x times 3 to the power of 2y is equal to 3 to the power of 4. Now, since these two numbers are multiplied, their, their exponents are added together. So this left side of the equation is the same as 3 to the power of 2x plus 2y. This is equal to 3 to the power of 4. Now, since the bases are the same, there's only one term on each side, we can also say that the exponents are also equal. So we could turn, we could cross off these 3's and change this into an equation on its own. So 2x plus 2y will equal to 4. So now we factor out the 2 from both sides, so it's 2 times x plus y, which equals 2 times 2. We divide by 2 on both sides, so x plus y will equal to 2. And that is choice B. So just remember, in any exponential problem, always try and keep the bases the same, or else you're going to have a lot of trouble solving it. So, it, we're on number 9. And there's uh, something looking like two parabolas and an upside-down parabola. I don't know if it has an official name because I haven't gone that far. Okay, so this is the y-axis. This is the x-axis. And we have this going. This is 8. Negative 8. Same thing down here. Negative 8. So it's a graph of 8 by 8. 8. Okay. And now we draw this. So it starts from negative 8. Negative 7, negative 6, negative 5, negative 4. So it goes like this. Then goes down to negative 3. Goes back up to 2. And then rises to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then comes down to 6. So I, I hope you can, you understand my drawing. So. <laughs> I'm not that at drawing parabolas. Okay, that's close enough, and this is the line of y equals f of x. So, in the figure above, no, the figure above shows the graph of y equals f of x from x equals negative 8 to x equals to 8. For what value of x in this interval does the function f attain its maximum value? So, we know that f of x is equal to y, so what the problem is asking is where in on what value of x, where is the highest y value? So we could just eyeball it and see it from here because that's that only goes up by 1 or 2, and this is the only other positive y value place over here. So we cut this in half because parabolas are always symmetric. So 1, 2, 3, 4, I got it right, and, no, did I? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yes, okay, so it is symmetric, and it rises up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so we know that is the highest y value, so this is on the value, the x value of 1, 2, 3, 4. So our correct answer is 4, which is the x value on which the y value is greatest. That is choice B. So guys, I have ran out of time, and I hope this helped you with your 
SAT Math Prep, and I hope to see you in the next video.